Okay, here I am yet again on the internet looking like I'm having a midlife crisis. Third life crisis? That's where I am right now. Third life. I'm not. I'm actually working toward my wellness goals right now. One of my wellness goals for the month of January was to try out hot rollers. This is how it's going. Later in this video, I'm gonna be checking in on my wellness goals and I knew that I was gonna be making this video and I had not purchased hot rollers yet. So I purchased them because I, I just have to reach a goal. If I say I'm gonna do something, I do it and that's that, there's no other option. So the hot rollers are in and let's see how this goes. The issue that I'm running into, or I, my perceived issue, is that I have naturally, I'm gonna say it, frizzy hair. Okay, we can get behind that. This is this is looking okay. And so I usually flat iron my hair, but when I do that, I have no body to my hair. It just it really pulls my face down, and I think that I look a lot better when my hair is sort of framing my face. And so what I want is volume at the root. One of my goals for this year is to learn how to properly style all of this hair. I have a lot of it, and I like having a lot of it. I don't want it to be shorter. Okay, it was looking promising at first. I'm not so sure about this now. If it doesn't look good, I blame you. Just kidding. This is the big kahuna right here. This is the one that matters the most. I actually don't hate it. I think there's potential here. Did I nail it? Not by a long shot. But I'm starting to see some potential with some body. I'm gonna do a little curl at the bottoms, just a, just a touch. This is the set that I got. It's from Conair and it's the Infinity Pro Jumbo Rollers. So these are the two inch. They're the biggest ones that I could find on Amazon. What's pretty cool is it says that they heat up in 85 seconds. A little humble brag from the Conair Hot Rollers. Eight of them is definitely not enough for all of this hair that I have, but we're getting somewhere. And that is what I'm looking for is progress. If you're new here, hey, I'm Healthy Emmy. I'm a nutritionist and the creator of the Slimon Starch Program. If you are interested in releasing weight and maintaining a healthy weight on a plant-based lifestyle, click the link in the down bar to learn how you can join the Slimon Starch Program. It's a catter day, but I have my laptop and there are two things that I must have in order to be able to really lock in on all of the work that I want to get done. Today. First and foremost, chamomile tea. I do not do caffeine and the reason why I don't do caffeine is because I'm obsessed with my sleep. I am obsessed with having optimized energy during the day and caffeine just robs you of both of those. It gives you artificial energy. It mucks up your sleep. So this is a reusable mug and I fill it with chamomile tea and then my vitamin B12 supplement. If you are low on energy, this is gonna change the game for you. So this is my morning ritual. I have my vitamin B12 supplement, I have my chamomile tea, and that means that I can dig into work. I typically will get a hunger cue sometime soon here within the next hour or so. I would suspect that I'm gonna get a hunger cue, but I haven't gotten one yet. So for the time being, I'm gonna work on some restructuring for the SOS program, which is my child, my baby is the SOS program. And I'm sort of reframing a couple of things and adding in a ton of awesome new content around the 12 stages that I take my clients through. So the first First six stages is the initial Slimon starch process and then the final six, six stages are taking that foundation and building it out into a lifestyle so you can take everything that you're learning and really what is going on up here meanwhile on the other side of the camera my perfect angel is behaving bear just a perfect cat and then I got the redheaded stepchild here. So the Slim On Starch program already has so much content about food prep, reading your hunger fullness cues. I mean, there's so much in there in terms of instruction. And then the way that I make sure that my clients are actually implementing it is I'm working with the client, the mindset coach is working with the client, the nutrition coach is working with the client to make sure that it is getting implemented successfully. But I also want to introduce tools so that somebody can audit themselves without having to ask me, how does this look? How does that look? Or ask their nutrition coach or ask their mindset coach. I would love for my client to have that tool so that they feel really self-sufficient and they can say, I can dig into my toolbox, I can pull out the audit and I can see actually how I'm going with implementing that. So I'm gonna list out the framework for all that. Okay, update this just in. 
My body has sent me a hunger cue, so we are going to go into the kitchen and make a nice, cozy, rainy, snowy first meal of the day. Sometimes I do a half a cup of oats, sometimes I do a full cup of oats, sometimes I do three-fourths of a cup of oats. Today, I'm just gonna do a half a cup this morning. Some of my bananas were extremely ripe, so I just peeled them and froze them. Probably a half of a frozen banana. You can either use plant milk or water. I'm gonna use water, cup of water. Put that into the microwave. All cooked. Because the banana was frozen, actually made the oats a little bit more watery than they usually are. That's okay. Now is where we're gonna get fun, honeys. So, if you know me, you know my personality type and my relationship status is chestnuts. I can link these down below. I get these on Amazon. Oh my gosh, how I love these. These are actually a starch. They're not a nut. See, they come already cooked. You could just pop these into your mouth. But I'm going to just chop them up and add them on top of the oats for a nice, you guessed it, chestnutty flavor. As you cut them, you can see, you can feel that they're starchy. I'm also going to drizzle tahini. This is a combination of cinnamon, flax seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds. Be really pretty if I had more banana to go there, but I don't. <laughs> so there it is. I posted a video earlier this month going over what my goals for the year were going to be, and I talked about the what step how method so that I could actually implement my goals and take them from this elusive, dreamy idea that I liked to think about into okay, I mean, what's actually happening here? What behavioral changes are going to be made so that you can step in to that person that you want to emulate? Remembering to appreciate that the circle of wellness accounts for physical, emotional, mental, social, environmental occupational and spiritual and so my goals are not just reflective of this is what my food is gonna look like this is what my exercise looks like but appreciating wellness from a more holistic standpoint for social my goal is to host a dinner party every month I had a brunch planned the weather in Boston had other plans here is text message proof that my brunch got canceled thanks to Boston to make up for this I have three dinner date parties planned in the next 14 days. I will be vlogging them. We're having a double date. We're having a couple over this weekend on Friday. Next weekend, we're having a couple over on Friday and on Saturday. And I'm going to be cooking from the Healthy Families and the Healthy Soups cookbooks. In terms of my physical health, my goal for this month was to book a massage for myself. Very, very difficult for me to do, to take time off, to spend that money on myself. Not easy, but important and not just important but a non-negotiable for health is to be willing to invest time and money in yourself if you're unwilling to invest time and money in yourself that is the highway to he double hockey stick or as michael scott says h-e-l-l double hockey sticks it's a delicious recipe for burnout if you're unwilling to invest time and money in yourself and that is something I believe. And although it is difficult for me to do it, it doesn't mean that I don't do it. Just because something's difficult doesn't mean that it's impossible. And while it is difficult for me to take time away and spend money on myself, I know that it is, it's a non-negotiable, it's a necessity. What other option do I have? The other option is burnout and not taking care of myself, which if I am taking care of all of my clients, my clients need me to be healthy. If I'm not healthy, they can't be healthy. And so I have to make sure that I, refill my cup so that I can help them refill theirs. In terms of my external health, this month I wanted to try out hot rollers and I was going to vlog trying out hot rollers, which check, I did that today. 
Yeah, I think I need more hot rollers. There were only eight in there and that's not enough for all this hair that I have. So still trying. Trying out a new hair care product. I did try out a new hair care product, which I love. I tried out a hair mask. Let me grab it. This is linked on my Amazon storefront. It is a hair mask that you use in the shower and it is not tested on animals. It's paraben free, it's sulfate free, and it makes your hair super smooth. So I really like this. I think what I wanna try out next is a root lifter to give me more volume to my roots. And as always, all the products that I use, I like using natural products, not tested on animals that don't have harsh chemicals. So everything that I always show you will be that. I also wanted to try out a new makeup product each month and I had the goal of getting a new bronzer. If you saw in the last vlog with my mom, I talk about that. So I did achieve that and I wanted to try out a new skincare product, which I talked about in the last vlog. Yes, I talked about the eye patches and also the dermaplaning. In terms of my emotional health, my goal for January was to take a day off. That was really tough. I sort of cheated the system a little bit because I vlogged it and I combined it with another goal. This is something I'm gonna have to continue to work on is taking time off. That's a, I just, I love to work. I'm a workaholic. How can you not love to work when you love what you do? But that can get into tricky territory as well. Even when you love what you do, you can, workaholism can, it can take over your life. And so this is one that I, I'm gonna actively be working on this probably for my entire life and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being a work in progress in terms of my workaholism. I also had the goal of establishing Sunday as my everything shower day. I have done that. I love that I have that routine in place. Sunday is my everything shower. Everything is getting taken care of. And on Sundays, I feel like the cleanest human on earth ready to take on the week. In terms of my mental wellness, the goal was to do something fun with my mom just for fun. And in the last vlog, we went to Home Goods, we walked around HomeSense, we went to Target. We love doing things like that. And so that was that was lovely and I did that. So let's recap. Host a dinner party. I'm going to give myself a check for that because my intentions were pure. It was planned. I had the food purchased and then a storm came. Sunday is my everything shower day. Take a full day off of work by the skin of my teeth. I did that. I did vlog it, so maybe you could penalize me. I did get a massage. I did something fun with my mom. Oh, I did my reset routine, yeah. I got a new bronzer, tried out hot rollers, new hair care, and new skincare. Cool. So my February goals, my goals for the coming month, I think I'll do in a future vlog because I have other things that I want to talk about in this vlog, like the I can't stop eating idea. So I'll talk about that. If you are a Slim on Starch client of mine, then you know that we differentiate between food prep versus meal prep. So I have not meal prepped because I don't I don't believe in meal prepping. I believe in food prepping. So in the fridge, I have a ton of ingredients for Kiss Meals. My SOS clients know a Kiss Meal is a keep it simple, sweetie meal, meaning I'm not following a recipe. I'm taking the food that I have prepped in my fridge and using my satisfaction factors, which is another principle from the SOS program, I can build a meal that makes me feel satisfied because yes, there is a difference between what makes you feel full physically and what makes you feel satisfied physically. And what we are going for here is satisfaction, not just from a physical standpoint of I need to fill my stomach up, but there are certain factors and they're different for everybody that make you feel satisfied with your meal, that make you feel like mealtime is over. I can now go in and focus on what I need to focus on. So let's build that meal. All right, so I'm gonna start out with a nice handful of red leaf lettuce. And then I prepped this earlier this week. This is a combination of short grain brown rice and lentils. And then I added some liquid aminos. And then I have some eggplant. And to make this eggplant, I just sliced it up and then roasted it on parchment paper at 400 degrees until it looked like it was cooked through. And then I had it resting in liquid aminos overnight. So then I just threw that in the microwave to heat it up. I love eggplant. I also have some hot pepper, which I'll just put on top of the eggplant. 
that is really hot so I don't want to put a lot of it <laughs> made that mistake before <laughs> some white beans in the oven I also put entire cloves of garlic and after they were roasted and cooled down I just sliced them up so I'm gonna add that some sliced roasted garlic some Hawaiian sweet potato pucks that were roasted and those were in the fridge overnight. I wish that I had some avocado, but I don't have any. So I'm gonna do soy sauce and then I'm gonna top this with a seed mix. This is everything but the bagel seasoning plus nutritional yeast. Again, I wish I had avocado, but I don't. So this will have to do plus some soy sauce. So this is SOS approved. We have tons of vegetables. Our starch is our rice as well as the potatoes. Then for the veggies, we have greens, eggplant, peppers, garlic. For my legumes, a great source of protein, we have the edamame, the lentils, and the beans. And then the seed mix is a nice healthy fat. Plus I'm going to add on some soy sauce to make this really tasty and all come together. I cannot stop eating. If this is a quote that you've said yourself, you've got to sit down and watch this video. I've had many clients talk about their experience in the Salmon Starch program who have struggled with overeating and binge eating and compulsive eating. And as you can see by the videos that I'm putting up, these are individuals that are smart, intelligent, well-spoken humans. So if you do struggle with this feeling like, oh my goodness, I cannot stop eating. What the heck is wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you. And this is not a testament to your character or who you are as a person. All this is, is a symptom of a system that's a little bit off kilter. Something is not going correctly with your fueling habits, the way that you eat regularly. And because of that, the symptom is the overeating. So you are not the problem. There's a different problem that's going on here with your habits that we have to address and alleviate. And once we alleviate that root cause, the symptom of overeating and binge eating will alleviate. I used to be a math teacher, guys. I'm a problem solver. Let's get to the bottom of it and let's dig up that root and let's solve the problem. I've written down the top four reasons why I see people are overeating. Let's see if you fall into any of these buckets. Number one, you are under eating. Overeating is almost always a symptom of under eating. So people will say, oh, I do so good all day. I'm doing, I do great on my diet and then I fall off at the end of the, end of the day. Doing good is a misnomer for under eating. What you call doing good is actually you eating much less than your body truly needs. And the body's way of communicating with you is to up your hunger like crazy when it's not getting enough fuel. So when you get to the end of the day and you take a bite of food and then you can't stop, that's your body's signal of, it's the only way that it's able to say to you, hey, we need more food. And now that you're actually giving it to me, I'm gonna take what I can get, but we needed this during the day. Where were you during the day? Now we gotta play catch up here and we need to make up for most of this. And people will come back at me and say, well, Emmy, I'm not hungry during the day and of course you're not hungry during the day because your body now expects that it's getting all of this food at nighttime so it's gonna save up all that hunger for the nighttime and it's not gonna waste calories sending you a hunger cue because sending you a hunger cue using the digestive process does use energy does burn calories and it says we're not gonna waste time doing that if you're not gonna honor it so while you think the solution here is to restrict more and to be more more stringent on the straight and narrow during the day, really set your mind to it. I would actually encourage you to take more of a counterintuitive approach here and eat more during the day so that you don't get to the end of the day and your body has to play catch up. Look at this binge restrict cycle. What happens is the under eating causes the overeating and the overeating causes guilt, which causes restriction, whether consciously or subconsciously, and the cycle continues. Reason number two is such a good reason that I've recently started talking about and I'm gonna be talking about it a lot more. 
which is the coolest part about what I do. I've been doing this for over, this is my sixth year of the Slimon Starch program. We've had a successful five years of the Slimon Starch program so far. And getting into my sixth year, I'm still discovering new ways to present information, which is super exciting. A diminishing, people fail to recognize that there is a diminishing ROI on food. If you know about business or finance, you'll know that ROI means return on investment. So the more money you put in, the more money you want to get out of something. The more time you put into something, the more time you want to get back from putting time into it. With food, with every bite that you take, the return on that investment actually diminishes. It goes down. The first bite tastes the absolute best. The next bite doesn't taste as good. The next bite isn't as good as that. And the amount of pleasure that you get from each bite goes down, down, down with every bite that you take. There's a failure to recognize this in many people and they're chasing that first bite feeling, they're chasing that high, and they're never going to get it unless they stop eating and then start eating later on. Hunger is the best sauce, so what you have to do here is recognize that you're not going to get that high. The first bite is gone, that first bite feeling is gone, and the only way to get that back is to put the food away and wait until you're hungry again later on. Reason number three is that food is your default, food is your hobby be food is the pastime. What should be the default is to just be, be present. We are human beings, not human doings. But for many of us, we have an inability to sit still with our emotions, with our thoughts, with our breath. So we distract ourselves. We distract ourselves through drinking, through eating, through sex, through gambling, through these thrill-seeking activities, ways to numb out and to drown out whatever it is that we are avoiding. Ask yourself this question. If you do find that you engage in eating just as a default activity, hobby, pastime, what would happen if I didn't do that? What would happen if I just sat still? What is the answer to that question? I want to answer it for you, but I'm not going to. You might sit with some, here I go answering it. <laughs> You might sit with a little bit of discomfort. You might feel a little bit restless. That's the absolute worst that can happen is you feel a little bit uncomfortable and you feel a little bit restless. You can sit with that. You can handle that. Reason number four why individuals start eating and just can't stop is because they're eating foods that hijack your brain and your body's hunger fullness cues. Did you know that the powder on Doritos was actually designed so that when it hits your tongue, it dissolves so that you feel like you are, you're not getting what you're really looking for and so you go and you grab more of it. It's like cotton candy does that too. Right when you eat it, it just dissolves on your tongue and so you keep eating it because you're not really getting it and you never really do get it. The millions of dollars that is spent to ensure that food is addictive is outrageous. That's, that's outrageous that food is ensured to be addictive so that you consider to purchase the product It'd be all fun and dandy if it was healthy food, but it's, it's food that's destructive to our health and to our long-term goals and being at peace with food and with ourselves and being in a body that's healthy. So these foods are designed to hijack your brain and to give you a cascade of dopamine that humans were never designed to feel. The amount of dopamine that we release from a food, dopamine is the motivation chemical, it makes us want to engage in certain activities, is directly correlated to the amount of calories that are in the food. This is why vegetables, cucumbers, don't taste as good as Doritos because cucumbers have less calories, they release less dopamine. And then you eat something that's super high in calories, your brain lights up like a Christmas tree. So you're not the problem. It's that the system is so overstimulated by these foods. We need to rewire your brain here. I have successfully, and my clients have successfully in the Slimon Starch program, rewired their brain so that my brain now lights up like a Christmas tree when I have Hawaiian sweet potatoes. My brain now lights up like a Christmas tree when I have Japanese sweet potatoes or I have veggie sushi or I have something from that my dad has cooked from the Healthy Dad Cookbook. How cool is that? This is not because I'm a superhuman. I'm a regular person who grew up 
on a standard American diet. And I used to sneak off to the convenience store with the money I had saved up and I'd buy Hostess cupcakes and how exciting that would be. So I, I'm not super normal here. All I did was change my diet and I was consistent and patient. And if you're consistent and patient with the Slimane starch lifestyle, you will rewire your brain. Which one of these traps are you falling into? Or is it a combination of many of these? There's a million more reasons why this could be. If you join the Slimane starch program, you'll probably get to the bottom of what that is and we can get you to be at peace with food. A very exciting shipment has come. If you know, you know what this is. Hawaiian sweet potatoes, baby. I buy these online, hawaiiveggiefarm.com. You can use the discount code ME5. I do not recommend getting the off-grade. I get the 19 pound box. The off-grade ones, again, I don't recommend. Sometimes they come moldy. You buy the good ones then you're all set. The best potatoes in the world. I am going to prep these for my dinner tonight and here's how I'm gonna do it. Before I cook these, I will clean them and I love this cleaner. This is on my Amazon storefront. Oh my goodness, the gunk that it gets off of the potatoes is insane. So I'll just put these into, I put a shake of this into this big bowl, fill it with water, put the potatoes in and then I'll drain the potatoes. And then I will wrap them. Let me show you how I wrap them. So I'm gonna prep a bunch. I'll eat as many as I would like to. And the rest I can just put into the fridge. I'll eat them later this week. I like to wrap these in tin foil and put them into the oven until they're baked through. But I use parchment paper to avoid direct contact with aluminum foil. So I'll wrap it in parchment. And then I'll wrap it in foil. Then I'm gonna put them in the oven at 400 until they're cooked through. They're all different sizes, so they're gonna take different times. You know, there are smaller ones, there are bigger ones, so I'm gonna to have to check them. I'll just check them with a knife until they're definitely gooey. The good news is that it's hard to overcook these when they're wrapped. When they're unwrapped, you can, it's, you can overcook them, but I mean, in the caveman days, they were cooking these over fires, so you don't have to be perfect with it. If you made it to this point of the video, I want you to comment and let me know what time is it right now that you're watching this video. I'm curious. If you're interested in joining the Slimane Starch program, I would love to have you. You can click the link in the down bar. I love you, honeys, and I'll see you in my next video. Mwah.